is it better to be rich or to be king? In this episode of the Get Fed Podcast, we will review why this question is so important and why you should be asking yourself it right up front. I'm JB, master presenter, former Fortune 50 sales executive, and your guide for everything sales and productivity. I'm the doctor, Dr. Andre Caruso, a clinical psychologist and your resident expert in behavior, mindset, and wellness. We hope you're hungry. It's time to get fed by JB and the doctor. What's up, everybody? I am JB. I'm your host for the week of the Get Fed podcast. Thank you for joining us. Really excited to have you. Got a great topic this week. Before I jump into it, if you haven't yet, give us a like, subscribe, a follow. We do this for you. As always, the Get Fed podcast, generally less than 10 minutes, giving you bite-sized business insights you can take action on today. Topic of today really dovetails nicely with something that was in our blog article and newsletter here in the last month, which was a major mistake that business owners make, that mistake being they create bottlenecks and dependency. And this is all about the owner, of course. And this mistake has serious consequences. But what's interesting is the underlying cause of this mistake oftentimes is our mentality. And it comes down to control. And I love this question. This was from Harvard Business Review. Uh, Noah Wasserman, I believe, was the author of this of this uh, study. But they took a look at founders in this study, and they took a look at success. And call me crazy, but not a bad study to look at for us as small business owners. If I'm founding a business or I have a business, what are the keys to success? And what's fascinating to me, and should be to you as well, I hope, there's a tension between becoming rich and maintaining control. And what I mean by that is it's almost like oil and water. They don't really form a solution. They don't actually mix together in a way that works. I, I'm going to put that another way. I want to make sure we're crystal clear. If I want to be rich, Generally, that means I'm not going to be king or queen. If I want to be king or queen, generally, I'm not going to be rich. I have to settle, in a sense, or compromise on which is more important to me. And so it begs the question, do you want to be rich or do you want to be the king or queen? And the difference here is a king or queen absolute power and control authoritarian they get to determine everything they have the final say in all of it that's what it means to be king or queen this is how it's going to be because i say so well if you want to do that chances are you're never going to be rich because chances are you're just never going to scale and this is why it comes back to control and why we need to ask ourselves the question. And the earlier we ask ourselves this question, the better off we are, because we're going to have a better understanding of the strategic vision and have clarity around what we really want to accomplish in our business. Now, I, I work with small business owners all the time. Doc and I both do, uh, oftentimes together. And very frequently, it's common for control to be a serious issue in the cause of bottlenecks and dependency. This is, this is what happens. What happens is somebody is unwilling to give up control. They're scared to delegate. They believe that nobody can do it better than them. And frankly, they probably ought to feel that way because chances are nobody is going to take as much of a vested interest in their business as they themselves. That is totally understandable. However, if we're unwilling to accept a little bit of sacrifice in vested interest and performance in order to scale and grow, then we're going to have a real problem where sooner or later, we can't wear that many hats. We just can't do it. We run out of time in the day. Our capacity is not there. And frankly, our expertise isn't there either, which is the really interesting thing about this. Four out of five founders, if they want to scale, will have to give up control. And if they refuse to do so, guess what? They will be asked to or even forced to. And this is part of the study that Harvard Business Review found. If we do want to scale and I do not have the skills to actually be the CEO, and that's that's reality a lot of times. I can be a fantastic technician. I can be a wonderful owner-operator. That does not make me a wonderful CEO. And not all of us 
are meant to be CEOs, just like not all of us are meant to be entrepreneurs. So for the sake of argument, let's assume for a moment that most of us are really good at running a business. Most of us are really good at what we do in our business, but most of us are not qualified to bring a business to true scale. We haven't been taught the skill set. We do not have that experience. And we become the governor. We become the limiting factor if that's the case. And that's exactly why it's so important to be willing and capable of relinquishing control when we're business owners. If the goal is to truly grow and scale and become wealthy, that is more often than not the reality that we're going to face. So accepting this and doing it are two very different things, but it's no different than if you've seen helicopter parents, you know who they are. They can't let their kid go. They can't give their kid the independence to go do something good, bad, indifferent, potentially get hurt, take some risk. They're unwilling to do so. That is most business owners today. It's very common for a business owner to be the helicopter parent for their business, and they are unwilling to let go. And there's a lot of reasons for this. There's a lot of fear surrounding this. It's a big investment. You have put tons of your time and energy into this business, I'm sure. So to be able to let it go and give it a shot to fall hurts and is terrifying. I get it. We all get it. It doesn't mean that we can't take the steps to get us there, though. And so if this premise is true, and we can all agree that, hey, if I want to really grow the value of my business, scaling is important to me. And my vision is growth, which is probably a poor vision, whole nother story. But my vision is growth. I need to be able to relinquish control. And our suggestion here is really simple. If you're at a position where you know it's time to relinquish control, the best thing you can do is for the small things that you're constantly taking control over, you've got to practice and learn how to give those up first. Start small. It's easy to start small, and then we can build from there. And if you take one small thing every day or every week and you relinquish control and you give that control to somebody else and you trust them with it, then you're in a position where over time you can really start to give up serious control which opens the door. It opens the floodgates here for your business to be successful, wildly successful, much greater chance than it otherwise would if you remained and retained authoritative control, if you remain the king or queen of your business. It's a really important lesson to learn. And so giving up the small things is our first suggestion. Now, for some of you, that may not be an option because you don't have anybody on board. And that is then really a precursor here is finding somebody you trust or being willing to extend trust to somebody to bring them on board to take over some of this stuff. That's a big ask. Could mean an investment of time and money and energy. It could mean an experiment that does not work out with the results that you want it to work out with. And yet it is a necessary step. So I would argue that's necessary step number one, if you're a solo, just bringing on somebody that you trust and extending trust to somebody. And if you're not a solo, you already have a team starting to give up some of that control to your team and extending some of that trust. If you do this small bites, a little bit every day, every week over time, you can give up serious control and you can really shift away from being the king or queen of your business into a whole nother level of wealth and success and scale for your business. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear stories of how you've done this, how you haven't done this. The reality is we see this, whether you're a really small business or a super large business, we saw this in Good to Great from Jim Collins. He wrote about great companies versus good companies. And a lot of times it all had to do with the CEO. How authoritative were they? Were they willing to give up control or were they just driving results during their time there? But the business was dependent on them. And the moment they stepped away, the business faltered, failed and fell through the floor. It's not just a small business issue. This is for businesses of any size. We need to be able to remove ourselves as a bottleneck and remove dependency on us in order for our business to successfully scale. I hope you found this worthwhile. 
Share your stories with us. I'm JB. This is the Get Fed Podcast. Again, if you liked it, give us a like, subscribe, follow, and we'll see you next week.